What's up guys, Goodzilla here. Um, today, I'm bringing a review of a figure that I've had for a while. Th this figure was the first unboxing video I ever did on my channel. Uh, that didn't make sense. But the first unboxing video I ever did was of this guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and show him to you guys. It's the Bandai Standard Baby Godzilla. It's not the Forever Series one, unfortunately. It is the standard Baby Godzilla 8-inch scale. So, let's get right into it. Um, let's see. Where to start? Detail. Alright, this guy was made in 93. Like, the movie came out in 93, but... Yeah, the figure was also made in 1993. Um, that's when they were still using hard vinyl in their figures. So, that's why he's, like, shiny. But I actually don't think it makes a difference on Baby Godzilla, because, um... He was kind of shiny anyway. You know, he's a newborn, um, godzilla sore, Had pretty smooth skin. Let me move the camera up. There we go. So, um, I guess I'll go ahead and do background, actually. This is Baby Godzilla from the 1993 film Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. It's one of my favorite of the Heisei series, so I definitely recommend you check it out. Get to see this little guy. So, detail, detail, detail. Bandai outdid themselves with this figure. The detail is phenomenal. Absolutely great. So let's, like, most of his back is just these little, like, scale circle things. Which, it's okay. It also has these little folds coming in through here. Which looks really good. Spines look great. I really don't have any comments to make. They just look really good. Legs also look really good. Um, here's these little toe... Um, bead things coming up the front of his, like, shin. Uh, he's just covered with scales and stuff, as you would, uh, as you would expect, like, on a regular Godzilla figure. But the thing this figure accomplishes really well is having all sorts of folds and creases. Not, like, articulation creases, but actual folds in the figure. I can see why some people would not like that, but I think it looks fantastic. I'm going to try to be peppy in my reviews now. Um, if you guys can tell, I'm talking a little louder, a little quicker. Um, so, the, the really the best part of the detail on this figure is the belly and under the chin and also the head. Start with the belly here. All the little folds and stuff. It's so nice. So, like, uh, what to call it? It's like smooth, but yet yeah, very detailed. Coming up, here's the bottom of the chin right here. This looks, I don't know why, guys. This is going to sound weird, but this right here, like the head in general, is one of the best parts of the figure. Especially like the underside. There's just a boatload of detail in there. Or a chin load. I don't know. I'm sorry guys, I don't know what I'm talking about. There's just so much detail under there. If I had a high depth camera, you guys would be able to understand. Um, here's the head. Also lots of detail. Um, let's see. Sculpt. Great. I don't know. I don't really... It, I guess... The only thing kind of weird about the sculpt is how the arms look. Like, from here they look fine, but from kind of an overhead view they seem to just kind of come straight out of the body, I guess. It looks a little bit weird, but not much. And you can't really see it from any different angles, either. Um... 
it's just like the direction the arms come out is kind of weird. But it's not that bad. Um, his legs seem a little bit crunched together. Should be a teeny bit apart. But it's okay. Um, let's... That's about... Oh, yeah. Um, just like on the... Basically all the Bandai Godzilla Saurus figures, the tail comes down and doesn't touch the ground or whatever you want to call the surface. It doesn't touch it until at the very tip of the tail. This happens with both figures. So, that's an interesting um, analogy between these two. Not an analogy, but they both share that trait. So, that's kind of cool. Oh, let me fix this guy. Okay. So, Sculpt is overall really good. It has a few, ah, sorry, a few very, very minor flaws. But I'm not that picky, so I'm not going to deduct anything. Oh, by the way, there are crickets down here, so they might be annoying. Sorry, guys. Um, paint job. This guy is a kind of deep, not deep, I don't know. This shade of blue, I guess you could call it. Um, the underside is a very light blue, grayish light blue. It's not white, it's blue, but very slight. The spines... Th this may have just have been wear down, worn down, but on this side, the spines are like the same shade as the underbelly. Right there, but then when you flip it around, it's not painted. I don't know why that is. It's kind of weird, but... I don't really notice it too much. Oh well. The arms right in the right back here, it they put like white paint. Or no, not white. The same light blue paint. And then it just immediately goes back to blue when it gets back to the body. That looks weird. I mean, did they paint it thinking that the arms were supposed to be like this or something? Because that's how the paint scheme that's what the paint job seems to suggest. Common sense dictates that the arms should be like that. That is a little strange. I think I am going to deduct for that. The head, the eyes are a nice gold, just like his father's. I really love, even if they didn't do that on purpose, I love how that is. I think it's also the same on Godzilla Jr., but my eyes are a little worn out. But his are supposed to be gold, too. Um, and of course, his pupils are huge and black. The outside of his eyes are, like, kind of a vanilla color, I guess. His teeth are individually sculpted. See? They're individually sculpted. Yep. If you didn't get that, he has two teeth. So they're individually sculpted. Well, they actually are sculpted into the bottom chin, so I guess not. Whatever. Um, the paint job on the teeth is a little bit sloppy. You can see some of the paint got onto the um, chin, but I don't notice it. It looks good. And they are the same vanilla color as the outside of the eyes. Um, the mouth. Well, in the Forever series, Baby Gods a lot, they had, um, red paint lining the crease of, like, the mouth where the lips meet. I thought that looked crazy, so this is a lot better. The only flaw with the paint job, you know, the only major flaw, is that his nails aren't painted. Just like on... Just... Well, they... Uh, sorry guys, I I'm thinking too much stuff at once. Also, his other versions of him, their nails aren't painted either. So, that's a problem.
it doesn't look good. Shame on you, Bandai. Anyway. Um. Articulation. Can't you guys tell how excited I am? His arms move 360, but it really looks weird. I'm not gonna lie, this is like really weird. Got a problem? Come on, come on. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm just a little hyper today, I don't know. His legs could probably move 360, but I don't want to like stretch or deform the vinyl. So for now I'm gonna say you should be safe and not move the legs 360. His tail may have had a glue seal, I'm not sure, but mine came with an articulated tail that could prrr, uh, can't move 360, it's a little too tough for that. So that's four, no, five points of articulation. So, articulation isn't the best. Um... Let's see. Movie accuracy. With the paint job and the detail and the sculpt all combined, this figure is extremely movie accurate. It's one of the most movie accurate figures I own. Holy crap. Look at it. It's Baby Godzilla. So, lots of points for movie accuracy. Size comparison. Um, let me compare him with him and uh, his future selves. We have the Bandai Little Godzilla and Godzilla Jr. Obviously, this isn't correct. I'm not going to get into why. I think you all are smart enough to know. And if you're not, then I'm sorry if I just offended you. But. This isn't size accurate, okay? It's just not. I do think they look really good together, though. Especially these two, because they're both, like, shiny vinyl. They're both very colorful. So that's great. But this Godzilla Jr. is cool, too. I'll review him some other time. Now, let's review him. Oh, sorry, guys. Let's compare him with every other kaiju in the movie he appeared in. So let's put him back here. You've got his father, Godzilla, 1993. The enemy slash human weapon, Mechagodzilla 2, the Bandai creation. I want to move this up. By the way, this is the pink tag Bandai and this is the Bandai creation. And finally, the movie monster series, Fire Rodan. This, right here, is the best sizing ever. Now, the best sizing. And if you guys can't tell I'm joking, then I highly recommend you go watch the film Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Because you should learn a few things. Anyway, this sizing is awful. But, I'm not deducting points, A, because these, this is an 8 inch scaled figure, and B, it's not even supposed to be size accurate. If this figure was kept this size, let's take Godzilla. If we kept baby Godzilla this size, Godzilla might have to be... You know, this thing where the people put the figure closer to the camera to change the relative size? I'm about to do that for you guys. Godzilla might have to be this big. Which is taller than my house. And I am in the basement. So it's not even supposed to be size accurate. Oh my gosh. That's how you take care of your figures, kids. Um... Let's take him off the table. Put him back. So, there's father and son. And then, Fire Rodan and Mechagodzilla 2. Not size accurate. 
and also not deducting points for it. The only figure that this guy comes close to being size accurate to is the Bandai um, Alien X. Because this guy is... Mm, here, let's take Godzilla and just imagine he's a human being. Little Godzilla should be about this big. Or, sorry, Baby Godzilla should be about this big. And Alien X is the size of a human being. So, yeah. He's almost to scale with Alien X. So you could, like, have Alien X kidnapping Baby Godzilla. That would be cool, but probably not, actually. Someone has both these figures. I'd like to see that. Um, anyway, I feel like I'm going on and on now. What else do I need to talk about? Nothing. Okay. Overall thoughts. Wow. This figure is amazing. Definitely recommend him. Um, you can probably find him for maximum... If you can't find him for under $40, then don't buy him. I got him for $35, which is a not a fantastic price, but it's good for the internet. So definitely try and pick him up. I'm going to give him 4.5 out of 5. Yes, a 4.5 out of 5. He is amazing. I'm just going to say that. He might not look it on the camera, but he is amazing. Get him. He's worth your money. Anyway, if you like this review, please hit the thumbs up button. If you did not like this review, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have more reviews you would like me to do, please request them in the comments section down below. What else should I say? So yeah, on a serious note guys, if you have anything you want me to review that I haven't already reviewed, please comment down here. Hit the subscribe button here if you're not already. Hit the like button down here. Wait, no, is that the dislike or the like? Whatever. Like the video, comment. Um, this is Godzilla. I'm not going to say that signing off stuff. I'll see you on my next